Welcome back. In today's video, I am going over how to create your own business cards and also how to use templates from different printing companies. I actually really like to use templates if it is a possibility. Um, if you're using an online printer, most of the time they will have those and they're actually usually pretty easy to find if you're looking for a specific product. It's usually listed towards the bottom of the page. And if you're not quite sure what you want to do yet, if you look at the very, very bottom in the footer of a website, it will usually say something like templates. Um, I know Moo has some really good templates. Um, I've used Got Print and Vista Print, and I have used the templates for all of them. If you are using a local printer, if you ask them for it, they will usually have a template they can give you. I already have my logo open and now I just want to go in and open the template and this one is from Moo. I actually really, really like Moo's business cards. They have a nice weight to them and also whatever the coding they use on their business cards is really nice, so I do recommend them. I just downloaded the Illustrator file. Sometimes it'll be at a lower DPI. Make sure to select the 300 and then select group lines of text into text frames and open. If you don't see anything, don't worry too much. It's probably the check mark is off of the layer. So if you go over to the right side of the screen, just click the check mark and it will open up their template. A few quick notes about templates. It does go over most of this. It's a lot of information to take in. I would read some of it because it does have some of the things they want you to do. Make sure you're using CMYK when you're saving it as a PDF. Save as PDF X1A. And to make sure to outline your text in Affinity Designer, you need to convert your text to curves. And it will do the exact same thing. The pink area, um, this is one reason why I really like using templates because in Affinity, there's not really an easy way to add a bleed into your file and to be able to see exactly like where the bleed area is. So this will give you the exact area of the bleed. With printed items, you need to include a bleed. So your design, anything that's on your design, it needs to be extended into the bleed. That way, when it is cut. It's not always perfect, so they could cut a little into this bleed area. And if you don't ha extend your design over into that, you're just going to get a big white line on your design. And obviously you don't want that. The whole white area is your design. In theory, that's the exact section of your business card. As you will see, this dotted line is your safe area. So anything that is super important to your design, whether it is the design itself, like an illustration, or any text and copy, needs to be in the safe area. This will ensure that it will not accidentally get trimmed, and it's also nice to give it some breathing room away from the very edge of the card. So those are the very basics of using a template. So now when I get started, I will go in and delete anything that I do not need and I don't want to look at and may possibly even get in the way. You can completely delete it or you can just take the check mark off of it so you don't have to actually look at it. But for me, I just delete it. So if you drop down in the layers, it's usually going to be this group. You can double click on these. You can get a good idea of what is a shape and what is actually text. I want to get rid of all of the text, so I'm just going to select all of those and it'll show you what is selected. That's all stuff that I don't want, so delete it. Now I want to get rid of these three boxes. And for me, I'm fine with actually keeping the sizes of the different areas. I'm going to close this group up. Create a new layer by clicking what looks like a page at the bottom of the layers panel and dropping that below the artwork guidelines. I'm just going to change this to design. Putting a rectangle in and I'm just going to change this color so you can get a good idea. 
So even when you change that color, that bleed is going to show through. So you know exactly where that area is at. And if you want to look at your design, instead of looking at the guidelines, you can always unselect that layer. So now when you have it set up, I'm going to select the fill tool, drag over that rectangle, and I'm going to switch that to bitmap, select a pattern, and mine is actually a half drop repeat, so it looks a little funky. I just am going to size it so you can't see the line. If you're a designer or a illustrator, the back is a really good area to show off your design skills. So if it's a pattern or if it's a character design, you could even do a design of a self portrait. Anything that shows off your skills is really, really great for the back of your business card. I also recommend including your logo because I have used bitmap it is still showing up. Just going to change this color and then I want to center this using the align panel, center it horizontally and then center it vertically. I already had my logo open so I'm just going to copy using command C and then command V. Just going to scale this and then once again I'm going to align it center and just play around until that is sized correctly and one other reason that I do recommend Moo for your business card is you're not limited to one design for every single one of your business cards you can do as many different designs as you would like and that's kind of nice because if you're giving them, like say you're at a trade show, the buyer can take whatever card they like. So it's a nice reminder for them of like what you can do and what they actually really, really like. So anyways, moving on to the front, um, you can do different artboards if you want. You can also do it in this one spot and that's all I'm going to do is to create a new layer. And you can always unselect that back. And I like to continue a color from the design itself. So the background in this pattern is the, that navy color. And I just want to continue that onto the front design. And then using the text tool, type in your first and last name. your title, website, anything else that you really want somebody to see, whether it's a portfolio, Instagram's really good, if you have a Facebook page, make sure to include a way for people to contact you, so email, and you can choose to do a phone number or not. I actually include the phone number on mine. Just want to align this. I like to make sure that it's not right up on that dotted line for the safe area because I do like to give it some room to breathe. So going back in to edit, um, obviously you're going to want to play around with how your text looks. Um, changing the font. I always like to make the title that you're using. I use designer and illustrator and I like to italicize that and I like to have my name bold. I like a nice clean modern font for all of the information and then it's kind of nice to have a hand-drawn font for your name. And one last thing before finishing up the design, you want just another quick reminder of what your skills are. So I'm just going to add in one of the butterflies. So taking a quick look without the guidelines and then with, everything looks really good to me. I want to check that back. Once again, everything looks really good to me. 
So I'm sitting here editing the video and I realized that I never went over how to convert your text to curves, which is kind of important because most places will want you to do that. Um, it's not only, not only do they want you to do it, it is something you should do before having something printed because you can't guarantee that a printer is going to have all of the same fonts that you do. And then it will switch to some other font and that's obviously something that you don't want to happen. All you need to do is to select your text and then go up to layer and convert to curves. And as you can see, it has grouped it and now each thing is its own shape or curve. And that is all you need to do before exporting this for print. So then saving one at a time, file, export. And because they specifically said they wanted a PDF, so PDF, and they wanted X1A, make sure that it's 300 DPI and then export and select the back, then select the front, do the exact same thing, export. It should keep the exact same settings, so export. And you have successfully made business cards that are ready for print. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you would like to know how to do this on your iPad, just let me know in the comments below, or if there's anything else you would like to learn, make sure to let me know and I will be happy to create a video. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks guys.